Hello. Welcome to my office. I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm going to talk all about the coronavirus and climate change. A lot of people have been asking me lately about the connections, and I've been researching this topic for, for quite a while, um, and there's definite links between, well, we, we, the, the effects of the coronavirus definitely have been affecting climate and climate has also been climate change abrupt climate change has also been increasing the risk of something like the coronavirus coming along so i'm going to talk about all of these connections but in a summary about 25% a quarter of Chin chinese industrial production has um has has gone away because of the coronavirus the actions of china to suppress the virus so that's about a quarter of chinese production now chinese production on a worldwide basis is about 25 percent or a quarter of world production so if you take a quarter times a quarter you get a 16th which is about six percent so about 6% of global production has been industrial output production has been shuttered temporarily because of the coronavirus. Now, so that would mean about a 6% about a drop of CO2 emissions, for example, you know, while the, while, you know, in the last, over the last few weeks to month. And it also means about a 25% reduction over China of aerosols or globally about six percent reduction of aerosol production now there's something called global dimming where, whereby the aerosols actually block some of the sunlight and cause cooling they offset some of the temperature warming from climate change and that you know how large is that global dimming effect um, i've done a number of videos um, on this on global dimming not not recently but the consensus is that global dimming aerosols basically are responsible for anywhere from 0 0.25 degrees celsius to 1.1 degrees celsius um, warming so they're offsetting about that much warming the the most widely cited number is about half a degree 0 0.5 degrees celsius but if let's say we take the one degree Celsius global dimming number, then you know six percent of that is zero point zero six degrees Celsius. So you could imagine that you know with those aerosols being reduced, six percent of the aerosols being reduced, the, we would experience a warming over the globe of about zero point zero six degrees Celsius over China it would be more like 0 0.25 degrees Celsius. That's if the global dimming uh, factor overall, in other words, if you shuttered all industry on the planet, within about a week after the aerosols rained out, you'd have a one degree Celsius rise in temperature. And I'm saying it's closer to 0.5, but if you take that one degree Celsius, then the coronavirus impact on China and the world would be 0 0.06 degrees Celsius like I said, um, addition of, of warming because of the shuttering of the Chinese industry. Um, and over China itself, it would be 0 0.25 degrees Celsius. Or if the global dimming factor is 0 0.5 degrees Celsius, which is, you know, I think it's closer to that, then those numbers would be halved. We'd have 0 0.03 degrees Celsius warming overall globally and about 0 0.125 degrees Celsius over China specifically. So there's definitely effects and, and these this series of videos I'm going to talk about the the details, but that's sort of the the, the overall gist. And that number it, it's hard to see, you know, go to Earth Null School and look at the change in particulates or sulfur dioxide or nitrous oxides. It's very difficult to see because of the fluctuations. You can't really pick out that signal. You'd have to do a detailed study to confirm that. Now so the coronavirus is affecting climate, the climate right now. Um, 
On the other side of the coin, climate change, abrupt climate change, is definitely affecting the risk of these viruses um, taking off in the first place. We know that in a warmer world, there's more disease vectors, if you like. Um, we get more pestilence and we get more disease, more bacteria, more vir viruses. Um, we know that um, in for people that live in warmer parts of the world, their immune systems don't seem to be as strong as people who live in more northern climates with, with much more seasonal, seasonal variation. And we know this. Um, this is one of the reasons why the Europeans uh, conquered the world um, in the past, because they would go into civilizations like the, you know, the Incas, the, the Aztecs, the Mayans, and these cultures, these, these, civil, these peoples would be literally wiped out from diseases that were brought by the Europeans because the Europeans had an immunity to these diseases, but it, the people in the more temperate areas, the warmer areas, um, like the Incas, the Aztecs, the Mayans, etc., they had no resistance to these diseases, so they were, they, they were pretty much wiped out um, by the diseases as opposed to by, you know, swords and uh, fighting. Okay, so, so that's one thing. The other thing is that um, there's a lot more, mig there's a lot of migration of animals going on. You know, in a warming world, uh, the, the conditions that's, that are favorable to a particular species um, can become, you know, not ideal for that species. It can be too hot, not enough rainfall, vegetation changes. So these species migrate to colder regions. They migrate towards the poles. And so this, these species then get more interaction with other species. There's more mixing. There's more interaction. Their immune systems are weakened because of, because of the movement. Um, they might not have proper food supplies, et cetera, so their, their systems are weakened. So it's much more likely that viruses and things, diseases can, can take hold in these migrating um, animals. Um, now, so we know, you know, the, the wild animals that are, that are being sold in open markets in China, you know, are thought to be the origin of, you know, the coronavirus, and there's many, many other coronavirus type Viruses that stay within animals, it's, it's, it's difficult for them to cross the species barrier into humans, but some of them obviously do, and that's the case in the, in the coronavirus. So, so basically, um, you know, the, the risks of these, thing, these, these diseases um, originating and spreading become much greater in a warming world. Okay, so now, so th that's the gist of it. There is strong connections both ways. There's connections between the, when the coronavirus outbreak occurs, that, that as it has, that is having a big impact on industrial production and therefore the, the greenhouse gases and the aerosols that are produced from that industrial production. I'm sure that studies will come out in the scientific literature within about a year showing these connections, but they're going to be there. Um, there's also connections the other way between a warming world making the risk of these um, viruses and pathogens um, uh, appear and become very serious issues for the world. Those risks are also there in, in an abrupt, uh, in our abruptly changing climate system. So let me get right into the the details now, um, but that's basically the, the, the summary, the gist of it. So let me bring up my computer here. Okay, so this is, um, this is a great site for getting real-time information um, on what's happening around the world with the virus. So here we are, last update um, was about, uh, about an hour ago or so. Um, 85,181 cases globally. It has the breakdown in the different countries, and you can just select, um, you know, the, the um, country that you want to look at. And if you click on a specific region, um, this is the origin in Hubei province, mainland China. Um, Wuhan is in this, um, in this region. 
you know, confirmed cases, deaths, recoveries, existing. Um, and there's all kinds of, you know, um, graphs showing the increase, um, you know, the, the number of cases here in mainland China, number of, in, in the rest, to total recovered, total um, in other locations. Okay, so there's all kinds of information here, specific uh, details, and you can expand any of these windows, and there, there's all kinds of data. So this is a, this is a great site, um, and I'll show you how to get there. Uh, well, basically, um, it's from this article here um, in Science Alert. You know, this website lets you track the global spread of Wuhan coronavirus in, virus in real time. It's a Business Insider report, and there's links in there to to um, the the data that I just showed you. Okay, so I'll just give a little plug for my website, uh, paulbeckwith.net. Um, please consider uh, donating via my PayPal to support my 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 videos, my work. Um, now, if you go to Twitter and you look at the hashtag, um, for example, COVID underscore 19 is, is a fairly good one. There's all kinds of different hashtags. You can follow the latest um, work. And for example, here's an article, you know, with a timeline comparing the coronavirus to SARS. So this is the article actually um, in, a, in a journal. Um, and it basically summarizes the cases. It was up, uh, it, it, it's not up to today, but it was published a few days ago. And um, it uses the Chinese Center for Disease Control, CDC, and prevention site. And there's a couple interesting things. So it talks about all of the details of, of, of different cases and the age distribution. One thing interesting is there's very few people, very few kids are affected by the coronavirus. So this is a relief to, to lots of parents. So 1% under 10 years old, 1% 10 to 19 years old. So if you're you know, if you're under 19, the, the, the rates are very, very low. You know, they're, they're highest as you get old, as you get uh, into age, higher ages. And then there's uh, the case fatality rate. It's about 2.3%. But this is a maximum number because, you know, there are reports of some people actually getting the coronavirus but having no symptoms. And if that actually pans out, that makes it extreme. First of all, it lowers this number significantly might be much closer to the 0.1%, which is a seasonal flu number. Um, you know, if the, if the number of cases is much higher, but people don't show symptoms, I mean, how would you even know that they, they're carrying it? So this is sort of an, an upper limit number. Um, and what's interesting here is there's a couple plots here that show the progression of, of uh, you know, some of the, the things, some of the, the progression of the, of what was happening here, like, uh, you know, so this is December 2019, and you can see these cases, you know, a few cases appearing, you know, but the, the numbers are up, are 10 here, so sporadically a few cases here, and then, um, you know, so there are some unusual cases detected, um, and, uh, you know, towards the end of the year, the seafood market was closed, which is thought to be the source of it, identified the, the um, coronavirus was identified, novel coronavirus was identified January 7th, and then it was sequenced, and the first sequences were shared just uh, days later, five days later, there were kits available for testing. Um, things happened very quickly. I mean, Wuhan was shut down here, and another 15 cities were shut down here. And this was the Lunar New Year holiday, the um, Chinese New Year, January 25th, year of the rat starting. You know, that was a week. And then everything was extended. Shutdowns were extended, mandatorily, mandatory uh, nationwide um, extended holiday given here. So that's kind of a progression. Um, and if you go... Um, you can compare the COVID-19 with SARS and MERS. Um, and what you can see here is, so the SARS outbreak, you know, first case here,